Okay, uh, good evening. Uh, this is Harlem Network News, and I am Terry Wisdom. And as many of you know, uh, Harlem Network News is a new media platform. We started at the onset of COVID, and we're still here. Uh, we are the voice and the drumbeat of Harlem and the Harlems of the world. And we know that we're an essential service. Um, at the onset of COVID, folks were walking around Harlem and talking and saying, I'm black, I can't get it. So at that point, um, I had we had been planning on this, my partner, uh, Brother Bernardo Ruby and I, uh, to start a network, but we knew that we had to just jump in the deep water. And we had a lot of the black doctors and you know social worker people to really get in and inform the community. And we have continued uh, from there. Uh, this week, we made history. Uh, here in Harlem, uh, Dr. Youssef Salam of the Exonerated Five uh, became the Democratic nominee for city council. So that's a powerful thing. Um, it's new energy, but we are also grateful and we work collectively. Um, our, uh, the other runners were our assembly member, Inez Dickens, as well as our assembly member, and that is in the person of Reverend uh, Al Taylor. So they are still seated as uh, assembly people, and we're looking to uh, bring uh, USAF into the forefront. So they're planning to work collectively, and I think that's very important in terms of Harlem. So getting on to why we're actually here, um, today we have members of the 52nd International African Arts Festival which is opening up tomorrow, uh, July 1st, and will go straight through July 4th. This is an iconic institution that has sustained 52 years in our community. So we wanna make sure that everybody knows. Um, I have Sandra Bell uh, here with us, who is the stage uh, production manager and has been for many years. I have uh, brother, Kofi Osei Williams of the Claim Dance Company, Asase Yao. I just love saying that, Asase Yao. <laughs> and uh, we also have with us a uh, performer, musician, uh, Craig Harris, who uh, has performed with uh, Sunrise. But I'm going to let them share about themselves. So, uh, Sandra and Bell, uh, would you tell us who you are, whose you are, and just a bit about? festival and your connection to festival. You are festival. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been one of my uh, professional things that I do is a production stage manager. And so I have been with festival and I stopped counting how long <laughs> since boys and girls high school yes. days when it was called uh, African Street Festival. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, I, I can't even tell you how long I've been working. Yeah. Uh, I was hired by our great Mensa Wali, K. Mensa Wali, who I was see. the um, artistic director for 33 years. And they, they pulled me in from Manhattan, working with the Essence Awards and, you know, the Grammys, et cetera, et cetera. Beautiful. You know, Beautiful. that world. And um, I, so I brought what I knew from there to festival so that, um, you know, we could, uh, uh, you know, upgrade in different ways. So, and I've been there since. Mensa is not there anymore. And no. I'm he's, still he's there. watching over, watching over. That's for sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, now that we are at the Commodore Barry Park, and I forgot how long we've been there for, because it took us a while to, um, uh, you know, find a place, because it's not, the way festival is set up, it's not that easy to find a venue. So uh, we were out on the street for a couple of years on Fulton Street, got to break down every night and put it back up. Oh my God. So now we found the home at um, the Commodore Barry Park. And so we are there first day tomorrow, July the 1st, 
through July, Tuesday, July the 4th. Okay, well, thank you for that. Um, sorry, uh, media is such a thing. I had to take that call. <laughs> That's a, a call that has to do with internet and all of those kinds of things. I didn't want to miss it. But um, thank you for sharing, Sandra, um, about festival. And it is just an incredible experience. There are vendors, there's performance. You know, this year there is even um, a symposium, which there was in the past. And it's something I, I feel like, um, and this is Harlem Network News, if you're just joining, I'm Terry Wisdom. But I really feel like there are certain things in our community that are so meaningful and have become our holidays. You know, we have, you know, our Kwanzaa, we have, uh, you know, Martin Luther, Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. We celebrate um, El Hajj, Malik Shabazz, Malcolm X, uh, Juneteenth, uh, BAM, uh, you know, which is Dance, Dance Africa. And then we have the African American Day Parade and we have our Harlem week. So that's, those have become our holidays, what we look towards. But I wanna move over and I am going to uh, start with um, Kofi Osei Williams and have you speak about who you are and whose you are and Asase Yao, I just love saying it. And yeah. then we'll move on to you, uh, Brother Craig Harris. So. Kofi, tell us about your connection to festival and a bit about Asaseao. And I did read your bio and how this all evolved. So share with us, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am, I'm the executive director of Asaseao Cultural Arts Foundation. And we started through, it was a bunch of young musicians and dancers and we wanted to just show our experience. So we came under the likes of Nana Deni Zulu and La Rock Bay and Chief Bay and yes. um, Baba Lukashe and Mama Wilhelmina Teller, you know, a lot of the elders in the community. But, you know, Asasiya, we've performed at festival about 10 times or so. But yes. this year, um, I'm featuring my band at festival, Orchestra oh. Africa. All right. And, Orchestra Africa, we were founded last year during Dance Africa. Um, Abdel Salam, who's the artistic director of Dance Africa and Forces of Nature Dance Theater, came to me and, and said, you know, he wanted to highlight African music a little bit. And he, you know, dance always goes with music. And sometimes he felt like the music was being overlooked. So he asked me to put a band together. Last year, we did all um traditional African drums and this year when he came to me he's like what else can you do I was like I want you to hear some stuff from my band so um this was the first year at Dance Africa that a band a full music band was featured wow. and we we had uh you know a full band but our feature wasn't dance imposed you know, with Dance Africa. It wasn't dance on top of it. It was just a band. And we got a really good feedback from Dance Africa this year. And I spoke with some of the people at the International African Arts Festival and they were like, we want you to come and bring your band. So that's what we've been doing. What we play is we play traditional high life music, but we also have taken a style with um, contemporary African music. So uh, one of the featured members in the band is Amo Watt, who is my friend from childhood. And um, Mr. Craig Harris was speaking about it right just now. He said our connection is Quayao, and mm -hmm. that's his daughter. So we knew each other wow. from, from birth. Amo is an amazing singer. So we featured one of her songs in it, Yeah, Yeah, Oh. And it's a song that is to an Orisha, who is a Yoruba goddess. And is but it's just talking about peace in the world. It's talking about the healing spirits of the world. It's talking about you know the greatness, and so th that's the kind of music that that we're doing. We have um, a eleven member band, mm -hmm. and so you know it's full with drums and keys and bass, horns, 
you know, and we just, it's, it's really about us spreading. It's another way for me to spread African culture and for people to, to start looking at Africa in a different way than it has been promoted and presented to us for many, many years. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that. And um, I am very uh, grateful uh, to uh, Sister April, um, who is, um, has the PR company uh, that is working uh, with the festival um, for really sharing um, everybody's bio, um, her PR company, uh, Aquila Work Songs. And they did an incredible job um, with the press release, just breaking it down. And I love um, your story, Kofi. You know, just the fact that you started as a drummer and you and your brother worked collectively. Uh, you went over to Africa, I believe, I believe it was Ghana, I'm not sure. So and we went to Guinea first. Guinea, okay. We went Guinea. to Guinea and then I've been to Ghana. I'm always in Ghana now, but we went All to right. Guinea first. Loving straight it. out of high okay. school. Okay, good, yeah. good. So. You know, that's a powerful story. And then starting uh, the institution where young people can study the culture, can study dance. And what really um, triggered uh, or caught my eye is that this year um, you wrote a play uh, of the HBC Youth Show. Yeah. So I love it. I love it. I mean, I attended Lincoln University um, actually when Gil Scott Heron was there. And I know he uh, performed one year at festival. And I consider myself, um, I'm a Howard mother and I'm a Howard grandmother. Yeah. So I stand firm for it. And I love the fact that you're bringing a play because it's important to connect with our young people. I'm gonna move over um, very quickly to uh, Craig Harris. And Craig Harris, who will also be performing at the festival, uh, can you tell us who you are and whose you are? and mm -hmm. your music connection. And we got two Brooklyn people in the house and we got two Harlem people. But as we say, it's Harlem and Harlem's of the world. So that encompasses us all. So thank you, Craig. How are you doing? How's everybody doing? It's, it's so good to be here with you and to feel this. I'm Craig Harris. I'm a trombonist composer. And I've been doing this for many years. Uh, I came through a program at State University College at Little Westbury through a man named Makanda, Ken McIntyre and Warren Smith. Not there, right. through there, and Shashi McIntyre, okay? And through there, I, uh, I, I studied music I'm, and uh, I played trombone, for those who don't know. Uh, we'll be performing at the, the festival this year, but my connection goes back to the East, where I lived in the East, I was educated in the East, Tin Claver Place, Brooklyn. All right, Okay, yes. and uh, yes. I, was, I was there always to hear the music. This was the place that I grew up in to hear this music and help cult really politicize me and get me the culture together. Um, and I, so I, I, uh, from the East, I used to go hear Sun Ra when he played at the East and all, all the greats used to play at the East. Uh, McCoy Tyner, Farrell Saunders, everybody used to play at the East and I was this young person there and I never missed it. Uh, and from there, I just would check out the things at the East. And then in like 76, I graduated and I, and I came, I started working with Sun Ra in, oh, in right. 1976. And we went on the world tour. It was my first time out of the country, but it all started. We played in the summer, June, like June, what, about 10th or 12th, whenever the, uh, uh, the festival was on, we played in front of, we played at the festival, maybe 47 years ago. We played at, right in front. They used to set up a stage, Mensa and Maliki, Akile, uh, G2, right. you see all of the, yes, the yes, yes. we played right on, on they, they used to set up the stage right in front of the East. And we played, and I played on there with Sun Ra. And it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's so good that I'm getting 47 years later, I'm getting a chance to play there because I've been waiting for this one. And I'm gonna okay. be, and uh, so I've been composing and I've been on the music scene for a while. Uh, I got, many CDs out. I've been working with a lot of people who's who in the culture. Uh, recently, I just scored the uh, film score for the movie Judas and the Black Messiah. Right, I uh, saw that. Thank we you. did we did that. Uh, and we've done many things with, uh, with on, the on, the, on the shoulders of giants. So I'm looking forward to just being on that stage because that, that this festival has been throughout my life, 40, 40, 50 years. This, from, I was at the first one they had. And uh, this festival, 
uh, to perform at it is just like a, it's going it's a cherry on the cake this year and i'm working with my band it's called the nation of imagination we've been together for maybe right, 20 right. years and uh it, we, it, it it deals a lot with uh uh the movement of this music we just recently did a film called the sacred place between earth and space which is harlem for me and uh, there's a, it's a yes, documentary yes. film which which was at the Harlem Film Festival. So I'm just grateful. Uh, you can go to my website, craigsharris.com to find information about, but it's just, it's grateful. I'm just really hyped about playing at this festival this year. Okay. And I'm excited and grateful to have you all on and to always learn something. Uh, for those of you who are just joining, I'm Terry Wisdom and this is Harlem Network News. And we are talking about the International African Arts Festival uh, the 52nd year. It is going to start uh, tomorrow and go through the 4th at Commodore Barry Park. And thank you for sharing that. One of the things that I love about uh, doing interviews is I always learn something. Even if I know the people, um, our co-host here, Sandra Bell, I've known her for years. We went to film school together, but the essence of what awards and different things that she just mentioned, I wasn't familiar. Um, I am grateful to have been at the East from the beginning. I remember taking my daughter there when she was a toddler and seeing all those greats um, from Sunrod to Rasad Roland Kirk and hey, everybody. And Baraka and, and, and his young men who are now mayor and deputy mayor. You know, right. so the circle is so connected. And um, you know, they and went to Howard. There, yes, yes. They went to Howard also. And you know, my daughter's very good friends with them, but I was like, when y'all were toddlers, you were at the East, you know? So um, it's just important um, that we continue our traditions and keep our traditions going here and across the diaspora. And I think that um, that is happening. Um, Sandra, would you say uh, a bit about um, what we can expect on the performance side um, from Saturday to, uh, the fourth on Tuesday, and yes. what hours are, and you know yes. where yes. Commodore Berry Park is, so people know and what they got to do. I, I know there's a, a donation of ten dollars if yes. uh, folks can do that. Yes, so go okay. right ahead, Sandra and Bell. Right. So I want to say that there's a big change in um, the program in in terms of the dance feature. Mm -hmm. For many years, we've had to dance closing the festival every evening okay right and so this year it may not stay like this beyond this year but this mm -hmm. year every day they open with dance okay right so the tomorrow creative outlets is going to open and then we have omar edwards who's the great tap dancer and his soul review mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So um, I just want everybody to know that because everybody's going to be expecting dance to, to close. So okay. I just want to make okay. that clear. And so then <laughs> we have um, uh, a surprise uh, guest artist, um, Zamora Lugat. Okay. Who uh, was the um, uh, she played Celia Cruz on Broadway. Mm, beautiful, beautiful. Right, right. And then we have the close out. We have the Wazumbians from Ghana. Mm -hmm. The close, the first thing. So uh, I would like to go on uh, the web, take a look at the, the uh, Tuesday, Wednesday. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, because I don't want to take up all the time saying <laughs> That's okay. Of course, Mr. Mr. Harris is going to be there. And of course, that fabulous orchestra of Ose is going to be there. They are smoking, let me tell you. Okay, so. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. And are we having a dance performance as well with the Sasaya during the No, festival? unfortunately, it's time. Here. Okay. Because you know they're hot and sizzling. Okay, okay, yes. okay. Yes. Yes. All right. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm very, very excited. And like I said, it's the July 1st uh, through the 4th and it is rain or shine. 
and we pray for the sun. All right. uh, and it is from 10 to 9. Uh, there are vendors. Um, there's a suggested donation of $10. But uh, if you don't have it, I don't think you need to You know, so, um, you know, just come out. Um, this is a time to connect with your culture, a time to connect uh, with your history, a time to connect with friends and family that uh, you may not have seen for a while. Um, I see that uh, some of the other uh, lineup, we have a reggae band, Raging F Fire, uh, and we have, of course, Craig Harris, uh, who has played with Sunra, which uh, he just shared, uh, the Wazin Indians uh, from Ghana. We have uh, Shirley uh, Sky from Haiti. So we've got a good, good, good cross section. Denny Zulu dancers, uh, Azar Lawrence and Tomoki Sanders. Um, so we have a lot going on at this festival and it's important um, that we support us. If, if we don't support us, who will? And that we spread our culture and we spread our joy. Um, Kofi, would you like to say um, any closing words and also share how people can get in touch with you and become uh, a part of your organization and when we can uh, expect to see this play on the HBCU um, story. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, anybody, they could come to our website, asaseyaent.org. That's A-S-A-S-E-Y-A-A-E-N-T.org. And um, I'm really excited about the festival this year. As you mentioned, you know, our dance company has performed numerous of times. Mm -hmm. I grew up as a musician, some under some really great uh, percussionists here in New York. Like uh, my my first teacher was Nana Kamadi Deni Zulu. All right. And, and um, Poyao at Japan was a teacher of mine, Bobby Neil Clark. So just looking at all of these musicians and being able to come up and share some of my music and share my story, it's always, you know, great to me. And, you know, some of my other teachers that I had and, you know, just watching some of the greats here in New York um, and be able to, being able to come to the stage that so many have blessed is amazing to me. Um, the HBCU show, we actually, we've done that show a few times. This year, we're actually doing a show called The Mad Scientist which is another show is about black scientists and inventors. Wow. Oh, and you know, what, what we always want to do is we want to let our children know that it is cool to be black. It is intelligent to be black. It is all of the things that they tell us is not, you know, it's safe mm -hmm. to be black in our communities, you know? So all of the things that they tell us is not, you know, Harlem is a community um, and, and what I always compare and look at, because my brother lived in Harlem for a little while, but Bed-Stuy, the community that I lived in, which, yeah. you know, just gives that energy, gives that warmthness. But, you know, being a musician, we get to travel the world. And, you know, when I'm in my community, I, I, there's no safer place in the world to me, you know, Absolutely. so... Absolutely. So I, I always feel that. So, but I want our kids to know that and know that what they're seeing on TV is not always the truth. If you use your eyes and you see how our community works, you know, that that is what they get. So I thank you for having me. I'm really excited to see okay. everybody at the yeah. festival Absolutely. this year. And, Absolutely. you know, just to see see everybody around and, 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 and coming back to, to be, being able to be outside and to be amongst each other yeah it, it's a it's a very powerful thing and i think um the wonderful thing uh this is harlem network news and we're winding down on terry wisdom but the wonderful thing about festival is that there's something uh for intergenerational for everybody of all ages and i know even when my children were teenagers like that was like there were things like the kwanzaa fest the you know going to boys and girls high that they always look forward to. They saw all of their friends. It was a great connection. And even one year, um, God rest his soul, I lost my son, um, Ali Sam Wayne and Wisdom, uh, November 5th, 2021, the gunshot. But the blessing is I remember him being um, part of Kehende and Dejembe and Sule and Sekou. 
And I remember them actually winning the drum, drumming contest uh, at festival on Boys and Girls uh, Children's Stage. So there's a lot of close connections, memories, um, and prayers um, that surround us uh, with a uh, festival as a sacred event. So Craig Harris, um, would you just give us some closing words? And you know, when you say Sun Ra, I remember Sun Ra coming to Lincoln University to perform. And that was a powerful <laughs> thing. Sun Ra was sitting on his throne. And at that time, we didn't even really have a big theater. You know, it was in the chapel. That's where things happen. So always remember. So thank you, Craig. If you would just give us some closing words. And I love the fact that you spoke about the education that you, uh, you know, receive to become a musician. So that's a powerful thing because I think our young people need to know that education is a good thing. It's, it's your ticket and it's how you use it. So thank you. You know, uh, it's about, uh, for me, coming on, coming this week, it's like bringing Quayao with me. I'm bringing Sun Ra with me, or Mary Baraka, Sekou Sumiata, Safia Henderson Holmes, all of all of yes. all of all of my all of my colleagues, we we come in that we're gonna be on stage that night. We I mean, of uh, course, I'm telling you, it's like 47 years I've been going to this festival, and mm -hmm. uh, it's 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 one of the greatest things in the world. This festival, I'm telling everybody, to support it. And even though that ten dollar donation, if you got eleven dollars, do it because I'm gonna tell y'all, yeah. yeah, if you got a hundred, do culture, it. Support your culture. If you got five, but just support our culture. That's where it starts. Uh, it, it, we have to support ourselves and uh, we're bringing everything. Nation of Imagination is going to be focused and we're going to be like locked and loaded. And uh, it's, it's, it's going to be just a great evening. Spread the word to the community. You know, uh, from the East, I learned we have concerts every Friday night in Harlem on 122nd Street at Mount Morris Church. I'm getting ready to go to the concert now. And, but it comes out of that spirit from that uh, Kuji Jackalia. We do, and we just take it on to the next level. I'm so good to see Kofi and Sandra here and y'all and, you know, support our people, support our community. That's, we, we, have, we have to do it ourselves. Nobody else is going to do it. Okay. Well, thank you for that. And one of the reasons, like I said, Harlem Network News, um, the drumbeat goes, but people don't know everything. So can you repeat? I'm right here in Harlem and connected with musicians. You know, but I wasn't aware of the Friday concerts at the church. So, you know, tell us the time and what people need to do to get there. Go to our website, Harlem Jazz Box, which spe box spelled with two X's. Every Friday night from 7 to 8.30, we have world-class music at Mount Morris Presbyterian Ascension Church. It costs $20. And uh, okay. you want to hear class artists, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just a great thing. And we're getting ready to celebrate our 10th year of these concerts. Wow. Uh, you'll go to our website, Harlem Jazz Box, spelled with two X, box spelled with two X, and uh, you will see some of the, it's, it's, it's out of that spirit, out of the East, that we keep it going on, and we keep it going strong. Okay, very, very important um, that we know and understand our community, support our community, and keep our culture going. And thank you, uh, Craig, for lifting up some of the names. We have to make sure that we remember all those names. Sekou Sandiata was a neighbor of mine for many, many years, right across the hall with Pat and quote Barry, you know, so right. Sophia. 790. That's right, 790 Riverside Drive. That's Party, right. 11, 11, 11. Love it, love it, love it. So love you it, understand, Party yes. Central, that's where we grew up. Yes, yes, yes we do. So um, our community is very connected and it's wonderful um, that we are keeping that culture going and some of the past uh, who have performed at festival range from Fela, uh, Rensen Kuti, uh, Hugh Masekela, Third World, The Mighty Sparrow, The Last Poets, um, you know, Abby O'Doon, uh, you know, Lauren Hill, India Ari, Erica Badu, Abby Lincoln, uh, Hezekiah Walker, um, and the list just continues. Bill Scott Perrin, Ravi Coltrane. I mean, you know, Jessica Pierre Moore, uh, Nana Camille Yarbrough, Sonia Sanchez, um, and I could keep going. Um, and that would just bring us um, into closing. I do want to share, um, I'm Terry Wisdom, this is Harlem Network News, but um, along with the festival, 
Um, and I know when it was at Boys and Girls High, I don't know if this is the first year for the symposium again. And remember, like we had some online stuff during COVID, but there is a symposium that is a part of the festival uh, that is tomorrow from 10 to four. And it is at the school, which is right near uh, the park. Um, it's at PS 287, which is 50 Navy Street. And that is from 10 to four. And the event, uh, it's not sponsored or endorsed by the New York City uh, Board of Education, but it is at the school. And um, the symposium uh, is going to, uh, you know, have conversations. Um, someone is going to, there's going to be an Akan uh, ceremony, a spiritual ceremony, um, paying homage to um, our ancestors. Um, and we also, uh, then there's a panel, and I don't have all of the people on the panel in front of me, but um, part of the panel is going to be Baba Sekun, who's one of the chief organizers of festival, and also um, Dr. Uh, Maulana Karenga. And Dr. Maulana Karenga, um, it, there's a whole connection between uh, festival and their organization. And of course, many of you know, and if you don't know, now you know, uh, Dr. Maulana Karenga is uh, the founder of Kwanzaa and also an educator um, at uh, the uh, University of California at Long Beach. And we have had him on uh, Harlem Network several times. So it's all about the culture. It's all about us come out. What a better way uh, to celebrate uh, the fourth and bring your young people, bring your elders, bring everybody um, come together. And Sandra, um, I will let you take us out. And uh, then I'll say a few words about Harlem Network News. Yes, I, yes. I, wish I, could, I wish I had a FaceTime right now to switch to show you where I'm at. We're, okay. uh, we are preparing uh, the stage. Sound is up. We're testing the sound now. The vendors have set up most of their tents. We do have a VIP section. Okay. Uh, so this is our third year. Um, so I wish I could just show you what's going on here right now because it, took, okay. it takes us like two days to set up. So we're wow. ready. Come on down. Okay. Pay okay. your $10 or whatever you've got. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, please, please. Um, this is us supporting us. And um, thank you so much, Sandra, um, for what you do. Um, this is one of our warrior women. Um, Christine runs that stage, has been doing it for many, many years, um, and it's a seamless performance. But like she said, it doesn't happen um, overnight. They've been setting up for two days. I wanna um, just give blessings and greetings to Baba Sekun and thanking him for um, always staying connected and supporting um, Harlem Network News. And so uh, folks, you can go to Harlem Network News at gmail.com. Um, you can call us directly at 646 Two six one five three nine seven. Um, if you would like to make a donation, because that helps keep us going, helps keep us on the air, you can go to Harlem Network News uh, at Gmail for Zell. We have Cash App. If you have ideas for stories, um, please call us. Please reach out to us. I do want to give a birthday shout out to Black Rose, uh, who celebrated her ninety seventh birthday. And if you don't know Black Rose, she was is an incredible um, hairstylist. She gave like probably half of New York City their first Afro and gave you a poem with it. I remember being 16 years old and coming from Queens on the train. I got to Black Rose at nine. I didn't leave there till 10 o'clock at night because each one was personal. But um, she is doing some rehab, but she had a wonderful uh, birthday celebration yesterday that um, our uh, Reverend Daughtry was there. She's a former Grand Dessa model from Black is Beautiful. Um, everybody turned out for Black Rose and I have some photos and pictures um, that I will be sharing um, with our Harlem Network News audience. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And Sandra, I hope I kept pretty much to the time. So blessings and come out to festival and it's an honor. And 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love us. Okay, stand firm. For whatever, back with never. Marcus Messiah God. Thank you. Have a great day. Oh, yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for thank inviting you. me. And um, I look we'll forward to hearing it at eight o'clock tonight. So I'm going to send it out to everybody. Um, if we record. Okay. So folks, you heard that. Okay. Tune in. Thank you. It'll stay up, and uh, it'll also be up on um Sunday. Seven, seven o'clock. Yeah, eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Seven o'clock. Seven. <laughs> okay. Um, seven no, to eight. I'm, I'm speaking about the Harlem Network News Show. Okay, okay, okay. So we got you, but you're seven to eight with the jazz. Okay. And then um, once again, uh, Sunday will air so we can just keep pushing and making sure people come out and making sure people know about us. Terry Wisdom, Harlem Network News. Thank you. Thank you all so again. much. Be well. Thank you very much. Look well. forward to seeing you, Craig. Look forward to seeing you, Ose, and you, Terry, as well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. You know I'm going to run backstage to see you, as I always do. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Have a great night. Love it. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.